Hi everyone, welcome to Play Hooky with me. My name is Roz. I hope everyone's doing great today. So this video is all about the C2C technique, the corner to corner method where you build with little tiles of double crochets starting from one corner and working on the diagonal you build to the other corners. It's just so fun, so addictive, a little tricky at first to get the hang of, but once you do, I think you're going to enjoy it just as much as I do. Now granted, this has been around for years. I think I was probably one of the only people that didn't know about the C2C, but I thought it would be fun to just share what I've learned over the past few weeks of the different methods that are out there. So I'm going to start with the classic version, moving to the modern or updated version. And there are a couple of mini uh, versions as well that I wanted to show you. And at the very end, I'll be sure to show you how to decrease these as well. So there are timestamps below so you can jump straight to the version that you're interested in. So I hope you find this useful. And yeah, let's go ahead and start playing some hooky. Let's begin with the classic. And what I want to do is I want to refer to each one of these by the numbers of chains that we'll be using. So for the classic, we'll be using chain six and chain three. So let's start with that. I've done a slip knot on my hook. Now I'm going to chain six five, six. Why are we doing a chain six? Because three of them serve as the foundation to build our double crochets in, and the other three serves as a faux double crochet, but also it's referred to as the uh, turning chain. So we want to work in these first three uh, chains here, or you can count from the hook down, count four, to reach that third. But just remember you're doing three double crochets. So here we go. I find it easiest to start from, count from the bottom up. That's just me. One, two, and three. Okay, so we've finished our first block. And this is what it would look like on your graph. Block one or row one. We're here on a finished piece. Now we're going to work on our row two. And that brings up a really good question that uh, is asked often. And how do you know when to do a chain three or a chain six? And the answer to that is when you're beginning a row, that is when you do your chain six. Otherwise you're doing chain three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we do the same thing as we did for our first one. We count three or four from the hook down, but we want to work in those first three chains with our double crochets. One, two, and three. Okay, and so you're left with this, and you're like, well, what, what do I do now? And I like to look at it as two little feet. And what you need to do is to uh, start your next row, you just flip one of these feet around, okay? And now you're going to slip stitch into that turning chain to secure them together. And now what you have is the beginning of row two. Now we are not starting a new row, so we don't have to worry about the chain six. We just have to continue on with this row by doing a chain three now. Okay, that serves as your first double crochet. Now we're going to do three more. Whoop. Two and Three. Okay, row two is completed. Okay, let's say you were working on a graph. One, row two. Now we are going to work on row three. And because we're beginning another row, we are chaining six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then we do our usual. We start from the third, from the bottom. 
One, two, and three. We have our two little feet next to each other, right? We need to make them go in opposite directions. And now we are just going to slip stitch into the chain space there. And we are starting row three. Now, because we're in row three, now we just worry about the chaining threes. So chain three for your first double crochet. Two. three and four. You've just done your second block. Now you're going to slip stitch into the next space there and chain three again, two, three, and make your three double crochets. Two, and three. And you've just completed row three. So we've done row three. Now we're ready for row four. What do we do when we're starting a new row? We chain six. Three, four, five, six. Do a double crochet in the third one from the bottom here or the fourth from the hook. One, two, two, and three. We have our cute feet. So now we have to flip it over and go into that space and slip stitch to secure it. And we are working our way down now with row four. Since we aren't beginning the row, we know we can just continue with our chain three. That serves as our first double crochet. We are doing four total before we move on. We're going to attach it to the one next to it with a slip stitch. One, two, three. Beginning our next block. Sorry about that. And now we are attaching again, slip stitching. We have one block left to make to finish our row four. And so we chain three again. And here we go. We finished row four. And that's all you do, back and forth and back and forth. Now we're ready to decrease. And decrease, really all you're doing for a decrease is slip stitching to stop the growth on the sides. We're ready to make this into a square now. So to decrease, we're slip stitching into the side ends here, okay? So just turn your work over. We're getting ready to work our way back down on row five. Since we're working here on the classic, we were working with chain threes and chain sixes, right? So we have our chain three here. All we're going to do is slip stitch into those chains. One, two, and three. Now go ahead and slip stitch into the turning chain space there and chain three. And build your next block with three more. Whoop. Build your block with three more double crochets. Okay, we slip stitch into our next space because we just finished one block, we're working on the next. 
chain three. We will not be doing any more chain sixes because we're decreasing since we only use the uh, chain six to uh, build on the sides or to start a row. It's not necessary anymore. One more. Okay, and so we just slip stitch into that next turning chain space. Chain three. One, two, three. Making our block. Okay, and we are ready to slip stitch one more time. And as you can see, we've decreased. Now we're going to, we need to get over here to finish. Don't do any building. We're going to flip and we are going to repeat what we just did. We're going to do slip stitches across three slip stitches into those chains. One, two, and three. And four, and now we slip stitch next to it, build another, one, two, three, okay, so we just finished another row, we slip stitch to connect it. We are not building, we are just closing our square. So we flip our work again into those three to move across our work. And you can either slip stitch in there or just start with your chaining. One, two, three. Okay, we're nearly there. And we have just completed our square. Now you can fasten off here or you can switch over again and chain, uh, slip stitch your way back to the corner. That is a personal preference. There you go. There is your nifty little square. Okay, moving on to the modern C to C. I won't go into as much detail as I did with the first one because a lot of it is just repetitive. Uh, what I really want to focus on with this is the difference in chaining. So with your classic, it was chain six and chain three for your foundation and your turning chain. For the modern, it is chain five and chain two. So we start with chaining five, one, two, three, four, five. This takes into account the three that you're going to be working your double crochets into, as well as the two for your turning chain. So we are going to work either three from the hook down, or you can count from the base, but just get to that third spot to do your first double crochet. Now why the difference? Why is it five and two? Simply because it makes for a tighter, more condensed tile or block. And that becomes useful if you're working with bigger yarn uh, or hooks that might make your piece a little bit more uh, lacy than you want it to, especially if you're working on something that is uh, like a picture, you know, a design, and you want your, your tiles to look very tight. 
So here we are with row one, your first tile. So since I'm starting a new row, I am doing the chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. I make sure I go into the third from the base or third from the hook. I do my three double crochets. One, two, and three. Now I'm left with my two little feet and I remembered that they have to be going in opposite directions for me to join. And so I slip stitch into the turning chain space and I'm halfway through my row two. Now I am not starting a new row, I'm still on row two. So this is how I know that I'm doing a chain two, not a chain five. And that serves as my first double crochet and now I do three more double crochets to finish my tile. One, two, and three. Okay, and there we go. So it's the same process as the classic. The only difference is the chain six and chain three. Now I'll do one more row here. We chain five because we know we are starting a new row. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to go into the third chain from the base. One, two, and three. I'm back with my two little feet next to each other. So I know I need to turn my work. That's my cue to turn my work and slip stitch into the chain space there, turning chain space, because I am beginning row three, right? So I've already started row three with the chain five. I don't have to worry about that anymore. Now for the rest of the row, I focus on chain two to start. So there we go. And that serves as our first double crochet. Two and three. And I slip stitch into the top of this Tyler block into the turning chain space. I slip stitch. I'm still building my row three. One, two. And my three remaining double crochets. One, two. Three. And we are done with row three. And we just keep repeating this all the way across. Now we know we're getting ready to do row four. So I would do my chain five and continue down. Moving on to decreasing on the modern or updated C to C, it is exactly the same as the classic because we were doing three double crochets in the modern as well. So just like the classic, go ahead and flip your work and we are going to slip stitch our way across to get to the other side. Slip stitching stops the growth of the blocks or squares because we're getting ready now to build our, or close up our square here. So one, two, and three. Now we're ready to build our next block. So we slip stitch into the uh, turning chain space and chain two and make our three double crochets. Two, three, slip stitch into the next block and continue all the way down 
doing the same thing. We're at the end of our row, so we slip stitch. We're not going to be building anymore. We're closing our square. We're finishing our piece. So we turn it around and we slip stitch into the three chain spaces. One, two, and three. Now we slip stitch into the turn chain space, chain two, and build our next block. Slip stitch. Slip stitch, turn, slip stitch three across, one, two, three. Slip stitch into the chain space, the turning chain, chain two. And to finish, we slip stitch one more time, turn around, and slip stitch our way back to the corner. And there you have the modern. So here we have the classic and the modern. And as you can see, this is a little bit looser, a little bit more gaps. Here it's more condensed. Moving on to the mini C to C. Uh, as the name suggests, uh, mini meaning that it's smaller than the classic. And I've seen it done a couple of ways. So I want to uh, call it the mini, and then I'm gonna show you the extra mini. Now the mini C to C is just like the modern as far as the chain count. So for the mini, I want you to remember chain five and chain two. These are the, the ways that you're going to be uh, starting your, your blocks or your tiles, depending on where you are on your project. Okay, and then everything else is the same except you're replacing your double crochets with half double crochets. So we will chain up five, three, four, five. And as we were doing before, we look for our third from the base or our third from the chain. And instead of doing a double crochet, you're doing a half double crochet, right? two and three. And this is perfect if you're working on a piece that has more detail and you want to incorporate more blocks within the same, about, uh, same amount of space as if you were working on um, a classic. Okay, and now we uh, have done our first row. So we know that when we begin a row, that is when we use the longer chain foundation. So we're going to chain five again, start the next row, row two. One, two, three, four, five. Third chain from the base. Half double crochet. half double crochet, half double crochet. We have our feet. It's time to flip and join. So we slip stitch into that turning chain space. Now we only chain two because we're still working on row two. And then we do our 
half double crochet, half double crochet, half double crochet. And there you have row two. To decrease on this mini C to C, uh, it is just the same as the classic and the modern because we were working with three posts again. So instead of three double crochets, it was three half DCs, but it's the same amount of three. So we are slip stitching into three to decrease and get to that end to start closing in our square. One, two, three, slip stitch into the turning chain space to begin your next block. Remember we're doing three half double crochets, two, three, slip stitch into the block next to it, chain two. Remember when you're decreasing, you are no longer worrying about the larger chain uh, foundation because you don't need it anymore and slip stitch. Okay, and we're not growing, so we're just flipping it over to continue closing in our square. So we slip stitch three times to get to our end. Slip stitch into the chain space, the turning chain space. Okay, and now we are on our last square. So we slip stitch across, one, two, and three. Slip stitch into the turning chain space to begin our next block, chain two. And we're finished. Slip stitch into that final space. You can fasten off here or you can return back to the corner with some slip stitches. Totally up to you. And there we have the mini. And now we are working on the extra mini C to C. And the reason it's so many is because we're doing a chain four and a chain two. Those are the key numbers you need to remember for this one, chain four and chain two. And this is ideal for pieces that you want to work, uh, quite detailed pieces that may, uh, you don't want it to grow too large. And again, it's a very condensed, tight, uh, square that you're making with this. So we'll start with our chain four, two, three, four. We are only using two spaces this time. So two from the hook or two from the base. You're doing a half double crochet and uh, only two of them. So one and two. And that is your first little baby tile or block. Now we are working on row two. So we know that to begin a row, that is when we use the longer chain. So we do our four, find our two spaces, 
do our half double crochets one and two I have my little feet so I know I have to flip my feet around and join them there at the top of that little chain turning chain space and to finish my row I chain up two I make two half double crochets one two and we have completed row two we want to start row three so that is our cue to chain up four one two three four two half double crochets in those first two spaces one and two we have our feet together again so we know it's time to flip them over and join them in the little turning chain space chain up two to build our next little block one two slip stitch we need to make one more for row three one two and that is row three completed I will do one more row and then we'll decrease this little baby to decrease this little guy since we only made two half double crochets that means you're only going to be slip stitching two across to get to the other corner so go ahead and flip your work and slip stitch your way across so that we can continue to close in our square one and two slip stitch is always into the turning chain space and at this point because we are closing in our square we will no longer be doing the longer chain foundation we will only be doing the chain twos one two two half double crochets slip stitch into the next space one two slip stitch we are not growing our square we're closing our square so instead of doing another one we are flipping and slip stitching one two slip stitch into the turning chain space one two slip stitch okay and turn our work <laughs> that's my dog snoring by the way one two we just slip stitched over because we're still closing our square we slip stitch into the turning chain space we're building our very last square one two we slip stitch into the space we have finished our little extra mini C to C so I'm flipping over one more time because I want to slip stitch my way to the corner 
And that should only take two to get over there. Yep. And there we have the extra mini for smaller pieces or more detailed pieces. And there you have the uh, different versions. Here is the classic C2C, the modern C2C, the mini, and the extra mini. Uh, I hope you found this useful. It was a lot of fun to share with you. And as always, thanks for playing hooky with me. And I hope to see you here again soon. Take care. Bye.